had a phone call from Skegness Police saying yeah, they'd seen a light in the southeast direction from Skegness, which puts it in the wash. And did we have any information? And we questioned the policeman and asked him, could he see any aircraft? Did he hear any noise activity? He said no. So we made a broadcast on the radio for any vessels in the wash to uh, respond to us. The southeast of Skegness. Uh, can you see anything matching that description in the wash? Over. Yes, we're by the Scott Hatch and have these lights visual now. They're flashing red, green, and white. Uh, and cannot identify it as an aircraft. It looks stationary. It's about a mile high. Over. The Coast Guard uh, are responsible for rescue operations out at sea and uh, the initial report was a, a, an object or light in the sky to the southeast, which southeast of Skegness is uh, to some degree over the sea until it hits the Norfolk coast. So we paid attention initially to make sure it wasn't something that we should be interested in. But when bearings from Skegness police and the Connor Coast tanker were plotted, it placed the lights not over the sea, but over land. Was it possible then the object could be detected by the RAF's radar station at Neatis Head? The Coast Guards asked if we had any radar returns from the general area where the lights had been seen. They uh, looked at the screens and we had nothing on our own air defence radar screens at all. But on one of the air traffic radar heads there was shown to be a return which appeared to be in the similar area to where the lights had been seen. And that return remained on the screen until about 9 o'clock the following morning. The lights were also visible well into the dawn of Saturday morning. Now, several explanations have been put forward to explain this incident, that it was Venus or a military aircraft, or that both the lights and the radar returns were a result of freak weather conditions. But from our investigations, we'll see that none of these explanations seem to agree. The, the general description was of red, green and white flashing light, uh, multicoloured lights, uh, twinkling light, um, fairly large, fairly bright. At a quarter to five that morning, and with the lights still clearly visible, this video was taken by the Skegness police. You don't see it from here. Yeah, red and green. Now, there is a strong possibility that this could indeed have been Venus. Venus was at about the same elevation above the horizon at that time, and it was within um, 14 degrees of his measured position. Now, I've seen the, the, um, the video, and it is quite obvious from the, the way the, the image flickers, what we're looking at is a very bright, um, unresolved, distant light. Now, whether it's Venus or a landing light of an aircraft, I, I, I can't possibly judge. But was Venus visible earlier that night? Right, so what I've done here is to set up a view of the night sky as seen from Skegness Police Station at 2.14 and what we can see, if we look down in the left-hand corner here, is Venus is just risen. It's, uh, let's see, it's, it's not even a degree above the horizon. It seems then that the earlier sighting couldn't have been Venus. It was too low in the sky to have been seen clearly. So what other explanation could there be? We've got a map that uh, brings together all the visual sightings made that night. And what I've done is to make an overlay here. And what I've marked on this overlay are the locations of various military airports and also a military area around Thetford where military exercises take place. Now, I have no idea whether there were any such operations that night, but we do see a number of the sightings do seem to converge towards that region and even the uh, Connor coast um, was looking in that direction. Over the years we've had a lot of reports of UFOs um, arriving at the observatory. Um, they us it's usually possible to put some rational explanation on them, some ground-based explanation. I must say just from the data I've looked at, I would tend to suspect uh, aircraft or some kind of military activity. As far as we were aware, um, there, w there was no aircraft activity in that area. Um, there were certainly no exercises on. Now, on the Monday morning, we investigated to find out what this radar return was and whether it was in fact anything to do with the lights that had supposedly been seen. And it turned out that the atmospheric conditions on the, the Friday night were what were called anaprop conditions, where some of the radar 
uh, beam is actually reflected off an atmospheric layer and it bounced along between the atmospheric layer and the ground and brought a return back off the church tower at Boston, known as Boston Stump. And that was the return that we'd seen on the screen. It's well known that radar can be affected by atmospheric conditions, the same conditions that affect TV and radio signals. And perhaps freak weather was responsible for the flashing lights. We asked Anglia Television's weatherman, Jim Bacon, to look up his records for that night. It wasn't that sort of weather, I have to say. It, what we had then was exactly the opposite. High pressure weather that causes these uh, strong reflections is, is something that's quite distinct, slow moving, fairly static. What we had on the night of the 4th and the 5th of October uh, was uh, air that's inclined to make showers, very active convective clouds, we call them in the business, tall, towering, cumulus, cumulonimbus clouds. When the air wants to rise, it doesn't want to form layers near the surface. So it's exactly the wrong sort of weather for making these unusual radar echoes. But was it the sort of weather that could have accounted for light in the sky? Yes, if you count lightning as uh, in that category, certainly it would. But on this chart, which is the chart for midnight, sort of right in the middle of that period, there was what we call a trough which showed up. Now this would have been a band of very heavy showers, thunderstorms almost certainly in some cases, and that would have been moving slowly eastwards across the southern North Sea uh, during the course of that night. The object seemed to be there for some hours. Could that have been a thunderstorm? It's very unlikely one would get anything to stay in place for, I'm not sure how long this event lasted for, but several hours, and it doesn't sound too much like a thunderstorm. So what was the light picked up by the police video? Well, an extraterrestrial spacecraft can't be completely eliminated, but uh, I think we should explore all the more conventional possibilities first. Bill Rose is an expert on black aviation, stealth aircraft. He believes the incident was a military experiment. The stealth aircraft are designed to be invisible to radar, and that's what makes this sighting quite interesting. The Americans have, from time to time, flown secret aircraft from British bases, and it's just possible it is something fairly exotic that was being tested over the wash, and um, they got caught out. I, I suspect the MOD knows a little bit more about this incident than they've actually let on. We invited the MOD to take part in the program. They declined the invitation, as did the police. The MOD did, however, send us a statement. In it, it says that the radar trace was due to freak weather conditions. It goes on to say, the lights were of celestial origin and were likely to be the planet Venus. It seems from our investigation that a great deal of confusion still surrounds this incident. Whether it was a secret military experiment, visitors from outer space, a planet, or just the good old-fashioned British weather playing tricks on us is likely to remain a mystery. And compared to the power